black trauma this week we mourned a black lynching and also police brutality against black Americans yet again and as a therapist I don't know how can I help my clients protect themselves against something that is almost inevitable at this point Maud Aubrey and Breonna Taylor and all the names of all the people all the ancestors and it makes me think what is black trauma well it's epigenetic it's passed down through the generations those visceral reactions you get when you see somebody in a clan's mask at the grocery store in San Diego or when a white person says the n-word and you don't necessarily know why you're mad why it bothers you but it does what do you say when your client tells you that black death is inevitable like cancer or getting hit by a car so live your life to the fullest and don't focus on the negativity and if you die you die should we be in a situation in a place where we see black death by racism and by police brutality and hatred as just an inevitable thing that we've been fighting for ever since Columbus that we've been fighting against I should say not for I don't know why I said that what do you say for, about it what do you tell clients what do you tell people as a therapist in general what can I say <laughs> that happened I don't know what to say I feel like death in itself is inevitable so does that mean we stop fighting for life we stop protesting we just focus on living or do we learn to accept that some people their healing is through peace and inevitability and then for others their healing is through fighting until a change is made and then if a change is made what would that change look like hatred comes from self-hatred hatred of others comes from self-hatred and in order to cleanse self-hatred you have to make an individual choice to do that so what we're really fighting against is the sickness of self-hatred the sickness of not liking yourself so much that you have to hurt others whether you are socialized into it you just came up with it individually abused into it by your parents and the people that are supposed to love you and they hurt you and they hurt you until eventually you thought that that was all that life was was hurt socialized into it by all the racist rhetoric on television making black people black Americans seem like they're not human beings like we're not human beings 
Never sit and assess the feeling that you get inside when you see a black person die on television versus when you see a white person, even as a black person, watching something like that. I feel a sense of complacency almost when I see a black person die on television. I don't know where that feeling came from. A sense of, well, this is the way life is. I'm just going to accept it. And I don't like feeling that feeling. It's like it rises up just to kind of cover up the pain that is exhausted, exhaustive pain. And then, like I said, as a therapist, what do you tell your clients? What do I tell my clients when they're afraid of something that's real? It's a real thing to be afraid of. They are justified in their fears. And then what do you say after that? Because it's not, if you get used to the situation and expose yourself to the pain, eventually you will habituate yourself to it, or maybe you will. Except that this is an inevitability and then go on with life, I guess. Until it happens or it doesn't happen. I don't know. Do you tell this do you tell them the same thing you tell children when you're preparing them to leave the house and face the world come up against a police officer keep your hands visible keep your tone calm don't make eye contact follow the officer's directions don't talk too loud I feel like boy having to explain that to my clients I don't want to tell my clients I don't want to tell my clients how to avoid getting murdered. And I wish we didn't have to tell our children how to avoid getting murdered. What do you do when you are a race that everybody takes from but nobody sees? How do you calm people down and help them cherish themselves when every day we're continuing to be told that we're not good enough? What nice words can you lay over this pain to numb it a little bit? Because you know it's not going to go away. To not be seen by other people of color to be used as caricatures and you know stereotypes and this is what black people are this is what black Americans do and this is what black Americans say and all this other stuff to be darker skinned black woman and watch your fellow black Americans So, who are socialized with white supremacy look down on you as well. You're not pretty enough. Your skin's not bright enough. Your eye color isn't light enough. So you're not a woman. You're not delicate. You don't deserve to be protected or cherished. And if you say anything about it, well, gas lights you into believing it's your fault and you shouldn't be complaining. Am I not a woman? Are black men not men? I don't know if this video is supposed to be. I've just been thinking about this all week. 
transgender woman died too. She was murdered. She was black. No one's remembering her either. What should we do? How can we heal when the wounds keep being torn open? I don't know the answer yet. I don't know what healing looks like yet. I don't know if healing looks like complacency. I don't know if healing looks like inevitability. Well, you can't make somebody love themselves enough to not want to hurt the world. So what do you do? I guess you just keep living. And maybe you just find the side that makes you feel the most at peace. Maybe it's a mixture of both sides, inevitability and fighting. So that you can just live your life still and be happy as much as you can. Whatever that looks like. God bless the lost. May they be found one day. Later days.